My name is Pilar Arias, happy to be with you and bring you some of the day's top stories and headlines. We normally start with the serious news and move on to the lighter news. Well, I want to start on a good note today, positive, good vibes. Start with a talker that's in the Fox Business Briefs that I know a lot of my friends were talking about on social media yesterday. Turns out some burger joints that people frequent quite often, well, their beef, yeah, What's in the burger? What the burger is made of? The beef, right? They were graded as to how well the quality is. So let's find out the latest, and then I would uh, like to read some of your YouTube comments afterwards. Let's get to it. Nearly all major U.S. burger chains get a failing grade when it comes to using antibiotics in their beef. McDonald's, Burger King, and White Castle among the chains getting an F in the 2018 chain reaction report. Only Shake Shack and Burger Fi got an A for using beef raised without antibiotics. Wendy's received a D minus. Researchers say the overuse of antibiotics in livestock can create superbugs in humans that can be hard to treat. eBay is suing Amazon after it says Amazon illegally poached sellers on its marketplace through eBay's internal messaging system. The lawsuit claims dozens of Amazon sales reps use the scheme to recruit the high value sellers. eBay had earlier sent a cease and desist letter. Amazon says it's conducting a thorough investigation of the accusations. For more, log on to foxbusiness.com. In New York, I'm Tracy Carrasco. Tracy Carrasco with the talker of the day yet again. And remember, Mike said he was worried about Wendy's. Well, you just saw there, Wendy's got a D minus. But I think uh, I've always heard the phrase everything in moderation. So, you know, as long as you're not eating at those burger joints every day, Hopefully, you'll be all right health-wise. Hopefully. Okay, this next story is local. Our very own Marcy Jones at a children's hospital where they are already celebrating Halloween, doing some trick-or-treating. This is amazing, and it makes me a lot happier that I'm here. It's the happiest place in Phoenix Children's Hospital, The Zone. Colorful, crafty, full of games and giggles. It doesn't get much better than this, except for during Halloween, when things take a festive turn. The kids get to come in, they get to pick a trick-or-treat bag, then they get to go to the tables that we have, pick out any kind of prizes that they want. Then it's on to pumpkin painting, costume hunting, and goodie bags. But the real goal of today is to forget about the tough challenges many of these patients face even if it's just for a moment. I've been here for like a month and a half, so it is really a stress reliever coming down here and being able to do things outside of my room. It's less lonely, too, for patients and parents. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. It's awesome to be able to see them be able to have something that is a little more catered to them and see that, you know, there are other kids going through the same things, but that they can all come together and have fun at the same time. It's all made possible by volunteers, staff, and Spirit Halloween. The chain partners with more than 100 children's hospitals nationwide to spread festive fall fun. Vivian Rabin has been participating for several years and says simply, there's nothing like it. I cannot even begin to tell you how it makes my heart feel when I see these little children come in and they walk in and their eyes get big and their mouth drops and they're like, oh my gosh, and they smile. And for just those few minutes that they're in here, they can forget, maybe for just a minute, why they're here. And it, it's just the most amazing feeling you've ever had. Marcy Jones, Fox 10 News. All right, Marcy, thanks so much for that. I'm liking this, everybody. Starting with the lighter, happier news and then moving on to the more serious. It's just a little bit of breath of fresh air and change of pace, right? Okay, this next story. Anybody out there like wine? Let's see those hands up emojis if you do. And we know here in Arizona, we got plenty of sunshine, right? To power things solar powered. Turns out in Idaho, they do too, because there's a solar powered winery. What better place to take advantage of the sun's energy than a place that is named for the abundance of sun that shines on it? We decided to go solar because we're on the sunny slope. This region right here is known as the sunny slope region. We're southern facing and we have been farming here since 1980. That's why Hell's Canyon Winery hired a company called Revolu Sun 
to install solar panels that will eventually eliminate the winery's reliance on electricity from Idaho Power. The panels will provide power to every part of the business from farming to processing the grapes that make this Idaho's wine region. The operators of Hell's Canyon Winery say these solar panels will pay for themselves in less than a decade at the rate of around $6,000 per month. And solar advocates say every project like this takes that much pressure off of less environmentally friendly sources of energy. It's kind of the right thing to do. I mean, people don't realize how much of Idaho's power comes from coal-fired plants. We're under the assumption that it all comes from hydropower. That's not true. And a lot of people have a serious concern about the burning of coal in this day and age. Many also have concerns about the impact of hydropower, which fish advocates say has driven Idaho salmon and steelhead to the brink of extinction. The bottlers of Hell's Canyon wine and its subsidiaries say using the sun's power will not only save them money, but will also take some of that pressure off the hydro system. We benefit from the Snake River. That's one of the main reasons we can be here, and we know that dams are a big part of making hydropower. And so if we can take a little bit of pressure off that by, using solar power to facilitate everything that we do here from farming to winemaking to serving wine. Um, it's a good way to do that. Tuck Miller is looking way beyond what this small project will do. He says projects like this and larger solar and wind projects will someday make older forms of power generation obsolete. In terms of solar replacing hydroelectric and coal, if you look at the trajectory of wind and solar right now in the United States, I think you're on a 10-year glide path to where this technology is going to be 99% of new energy infrastructure in the United States. Steve Liebenthal, Fox 9 Now. All right, today's top story is getting a lot of people talking, a lot of comments. I really like it. Currently 173 of you watching the YouTube stream. Happy to have you here. We are getting ready for the weekend, right? We have a busy next couple days here on News Now, which is a part of Fox10Phoenix.com. Who is planning? Remember those hands up emojis. Who's planning on watching the Arizona Cardinals take on the Denver Broncos tonight on our very own Fox 10 Phoenix? That's right. We're going to have the game Thursday night football. And a lot of people super happy that it's football season. They like to watch games with family and friends, maybe eat, maybe drink very common. Who are you rooting for if you are planning on watching the game? Of course, all of us here in Arizona. Well, the majority of us, at least, if we're native in particular, are probably rooting for the Cardinals, even though they're not doing too hot this year. But we do have a lot of Denver Broncos fans that don't just live here in Arizona, but travel here in order to watch the Broncos game. So it'll be an interesting matchup to see, to say the least. Okay. The most serious story has been saved for last, and that's because it's a story we've been covering every single day this week. The 13-year-old missing Wisconsin teen is still missing. Let's get the latest update. With more than 400 tips pouring into the Barron County Sheriff's Department and hundreds of law enforcement agents on the ground conducting secondary searches near the Kloss home on Highway 8, just outside of Barron, still not a trace has been seen of Jamie. Her parents died from gunshot wounds. That's why we were ruling this a homicide. There was no gun found on the scene. And we believe Jamie was home based on the evidence in our case. Um, some of it um, from that 911 call and uh, some of it is still a part of the ACT investigation and we're not able to comment on why we believe that. A next door neighbor tells Fox 9 she heard two gunshots early Monday morning but saw nothing else. Police responded to a mysterious 911 call within four minutes, but Jamie was already gone. Clearly frustrated with the lack of answers, Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald pleaded with the community to keep an eye out for anything unusual. Walk your properties. There will be many hunters in the area in the upcoming weekend and daily. Check your cabins, walk your land, and report anything you feel is important to us. You will never know if it will help to bring Jamie home unless you call. As investigators scour Jamie's social media accounts and speak with family and friends, the community is feeling helpless and on edge. A private town hall was organized by the sheriff himself outside of town in Rice Lake at a conference center. The idea was to give Barron County residents a place to connect and assess how everyone is holding up. The mood is sadness and anticipation of bringing Jamie home and just trying to do what we can to support other people and support the family. 